Welcome to another episode of Conversations. Today we have Daisy. Welcome, Daisy. Thank you. And welcome uh, to all you, those who are listening. And I'm very happy to be here with you. I'm happy to have you here. So we're going to talk about love languages and communication. And I told her right before we hit record that I had a question for her. So I did take a love language test um, a long time ago. Mm. Is it something that you should refresh like every year, take it or every decade, take it? Does it change for people or do you think it stays the same? I'm going to ask you a weird question uh, and a question the other way around. Um, okay. So do you change over the years? Yes, of course. Yes, you do. And that also means, of course, your love language can change over this year. This is not a fixed personality you will carry for the rest of your life. It will change and perhaps in some part of your, your life one thing is more important than other mm -hmm. and another part of your life something else becomes more important right that's true okay whoops um so are do you work with the the five that were in Gary is it Gary Chapman is that his name yeah it's Gary, it's Gary Chapman yeah it's a book from uh, uh 92 where he wrote about these five love language uh, and yes I do use them when I do uh, couples coaching um, okay I want, wanted to say this is, uh, I like them very much. Uh, I also just wanted to say, to be clear, there is no scientific proof of this. But I do like it for the conversation and the communication. And also it is traits everybody can see in themselves. Mm -hmm. So for me, it is a tool to get a couple to open up about how do they communicate with each other and how would they like to communicate with each other. Right. So does it typically happen that what my love language would be is what I do for my partner or, yes. and then they yeah. do what they want to receive to the, okay. Yeah. I thought maybe that it is, was just that. Is, that is a classic. <laughs> yes. Uh, and also uh, if it's not the way how you communicate love, uh, what your partner does, you also have a tendency not to see what they do. Because for you, that is not what in your communication of love, you are doing all what you would like your partner to do, because that's how you communicate your love. And your partner is not seeing it because they are doing something differently. Right, exactly. Yeah. So what is your advice for couples when they come and they, they talk about that? Because you don't want to try and change the person that you're with. No, Obviously, they no, came no. as you fell in love with them. Um, mm. But for me personally, I will thank my husband all the time. Thanks for doing that. They, and he always says, you don't have to thank me. You don't have to thank me. But that's what I want. <laughs> I want yeah. So how do you how do you like get in their mind like thank me I need those words how do you do yes. that? It is really having the conversation of saying okay how would I like you to show me you love me so not changing the way you do but also be aware of that I perhaps need different things. So keep on to your own love language, but also take into account what is your partner's love language. So finding the good balance. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit, uh, as a simple example, for example, can be uh, if you have, uh, if uh, your partner is vegetarian and you are not, you also make two different dishes. Right, right. You do a communicate each other in that way and do the same uh, when you communicate with each other. Bear in mind that the person you are talking to perhaps don't communicate in the same way as you. And one of the things I'm always saying, if you are unsure, then ask. Really, what is, just ask. Hey, I don't feel you are appreciating the things I'm doing for you. Mm -hmm. You are not verbally telling me you are, and I need to hear it verbally uh, to feel appreciated. Well, I feel like a, m most couples that I know that have struggles, it's a communication barrier and it's yes. usually that nobody in the situation is feeling heard, mm, you know, exactly. that you're just going back yeah. and forth and you're like, you're not listening. Um, I'm not speaking from experience. My husband's perfect. <laughs> um, but you know what I mean? Like mm. it, it's that constant, it feels like you're on a hamster wheel where it's just like, 
but you're not hearing me. That's not how I'm saying it. So how do you, how do you break that pattern? Yeah. Uh, if you do, and this is not that much about love language, it's more general communication. If you do have this pattern of feeling, uh, both partner is feeling that the, the other partner is not listening and you tend to come into a loop where you continue to have the same discussion, the same mm -hmm. argument again and again, and the same defense also again and again. Mm -hmm. um, one of the advices I'm doing, if, if you do see this in your communication together, Try the next time when you have a conflict, not in the moment, but afterwards, mm -hmm. try to write a letter to each other oh. saying, how did I feel in this situation? What was my emotion? What, uh, where did I feel you, you misunderstood me? So become very concrete, but write it down and then you read each other's letters. So you switch letters and you give each other the time to read the letter without you have to talk about it right away. But it is a little bit of practice in really listening to what the other person say, because it, it tends to when we do have a discussion, we get so focused in getting our point out in the discussion. And this is not only in relationship, that is in any discussion you will have yes, in your life, right? that you are st stop listening. You stop listening to what the other person is saying because you want you want to find the break where you can come in with your point. Yeah. And when you are so focused on when there is a break in the conversation, the discuss, uh, discussion, you are not listening. You're right. And I love that idea of writing a letter because even if it's not a full dear so-and-so, love so-and-so, yes. just bullet points or just things mm -hmm. because when it's not heated, somebody will always have that to refer back to where they can yes. say, let me go look at what, what she needs from me or what he needs from me. It's right here in black and white that you yeah. can't um, interpret, you know, cause that's the thing when you're communicating with anyone, there's tones, you know, yeah. where they, it might be the same sentence every single time, but people to have it with a tone or, yeah. you know, they interpret it on their own. So mm -hmm. I love that idea. Thank you so much yeah. for that. That is a great idea. Is there a common love language that most people have, or is it all, all five different across the border? Do you notice a common one coming up? Uh, I would say it's, it's pretty much, uh, all over the borders. Uh, but I, uh, I will say I have only experience in, in the time where I have been using it, where physical touch was not important at all. Uh, and it's also a little bit, we're talking about rom romantic relationships. Yes. And part of a, a romantic <laughs> relationship is also <laughs> that you do get physical together. Right. So it's, that one I have only experienced once that that one was not squat at all. Uh, but otherwise, I will say it is pretty much uh, all over. I will say there is a tendency if people have just met each other, mm -hmm. that these one words of affirmation and physical touch are going higher than they are if people have been uh, together for a long time. If you take the test, uh, you also get a percentage of how much uh, the different love languages are. Uh, are. So it's not mm -hmm. you have this uh, it's a percentage and most people have more than one. Uh, right. But normally what I see is you have around two that is dominant. Well, right. So, yeah. Um, yeah, if you are having a couple in therapy and or do you call it therapy? Is that what you call no, it? No, I don't. I call it coaching. Uh, coaching. Because, yeah, I am. Okay. I am a certified coach, but I'm not a certified therapist, which also means I don't do therapy. What's the difference? The, the, when you say the, the very easy uh, distinguish is to be able to be ready for coaching. You have to be ready to, from the point you come and go to the future. Okay. If you need to resolve the past first, then it's therapy. So that is the easy distinguish. Okay, that makes While perfect this, sense. Yeah. And then what if there's any form of addiction there's doing that, hey, this couple needs uh, con uh, counseling in any art, then it's always, always therapy. It will never be coaching. 
what what made you get into this coaching? And you're a transformational yeah. coach, right? So why yes. what what brought you into that? Yeah, uh, the transformational part uh, is a little bit. I have a background in uh, research. I'm a microbiologist, uh, <laughs> and trans transformative uh, uh, transformative coaching is um, very much about uh, behavior science, co uh, cognitive science. So it's a very science based coaching approach and of course with a science background I'm going to choose a science-based coaching approach right because there is a reason why I chose science in the first uh first career so it also spoke to me to continue with that when I changed my career into coaching uh, yeah how did you, what, what made you transition from one to the other yeah it was in fact uh a coaching who made me transition from you one went to, to another a coach Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, I went to a coach by coincidence. Uh, so I worked in corporate life for many years. Mm -hmm. um, and I had, in the end of my career, I had a stationery here in, uh, in Germany where I'm based. Uh, and that lasted for three years. And after those three years, headquarter wanted me back to Denmark. And I didn't want to go back to Denmark. And I had already there for some years been thinking about, I want my work life to look different. Mm -hmm. So it seems like a natural pause here to say, okay, I'm going to ask to be released from my contract and then I'm going to figure out what I want to do. Were you in so, a lab? Yes, I was in a lab. So okay. and that, was, uh, that was one of the reasons why I, uh, I had very hard to see myself in that ca career the next 20 years because when you do work in a laboratory, you have very fixed working hours. Right. Uh, and it's very scheduled, everything. And I was I was craving having more freedom to design my own work life. Um, so I stopped there. And my uh, initial idea was I wanted to, um, to uh, take a master in data science. Uh, mm -hmm. I had already done some big data programming uh, at work and things like that and found it intriguing. Uh, and as a data science, uh, I could work as a freelancer. So I could be much more free in how I work. And I started, and after two and a half months, I was like, oh, my God, this is not me. <laughs> <laughs> really, like, this is really not me. Well, you don't know uh, until you try. No. Um, so at this point where I was really uh, feeling quite lost and was unsure of what to do, mm -hmm. uh, I had a friend who was taking a coaching training. And in his program, one of the voluntarily to be coach on uh, didn't show up for a call. And he pinged me and say, hey, I know you're doing nothing. Come in and get coach. Oh, my god! I was gosh. like, yeah, I'm doing nothing. I can do that. <laughs> so I jumped in uh, and got coached by one of the students um, on this question of what to do now. Because I felt lost. I was a little bit, okay, the plan I had was not working. And the coaching didn't work at all. It was not a success at all. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but that was okay. It was just, yeah, I, it, they were starting to be coaches and things like that. And I, I had no expectation whatsoever. I was just doing a friend a favor. Yeah, um, right. So perf perfectly fine. But what happened afterwards What was I got a call for the teacher. And she said, she said, hey, I could see, uh, because she, she was listening in because there was a training mm -hmm. session to give feedback and things like afterwards. Right. And like she said, I, I could see you did, you got nothing out of this. So <laughs> will you be okay if spending half an hour with me? Okay. And in three questions, she got my mind totally clear on what was the problem and what I wanted to do now. Oh my gosh. Do you remember yes, so, do you remember what the three questions were? Unfortunately not not uh, <laughs> I don't. Uh but I, I was a little bit was like you afterwards like wow. Uh but one of the insights that came from uh this uh, session was I did have the economy to take half a year of break and find out what I want to do with my life. So that was what I was going to do instead of stressing of finding the next yeah. career. I'm going to was going to take it slow, find out what I really want to do now. 
And the other thought I had was like, oh, I want to know how she did that. And I was like, okay, if I'm not going to do anything half a year, I can take a coach training. Oh, sure. Yeah, <laughs> yes. that works. <laughs> yes. So I signed up for coach training. And just out of curiosity, I really wanted to know how she did this. And the first week on the course, I was just like, oh, this is amazing. This is what I want to do. So I stopped completely to look for alternative ones. Just went that direction afterwards. Right. Well, because you're getting to witness your work yeah. working. Mm -hmm. You're getting to witness yeah. it like people having the light bulbs going off. And yeah, because yeah. for scientist, scientific minds, you like to see the proof. Yeah. So you're seeing exactly. the proof and yeah. trying, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, so do you help individuals for careers? Are you helping them just in life? What exactly are you doing? Yes. Uh, what I'm saying normally, what I do with my clients is I help them to get clarity. Hmm. So that can be both a personal, it can be a career wise, it can be as a couple. Mm -hmm. That is what I help them with. Uh, also, as a transformative coach, you're working with people's mindsets. And right. if you have a lack of clarity, either of what to do with your life or not not feeling you are where you wanted to be in life, uh, what you are missing is clarity. That's interesting. So when you have a discovery call, what does that involve? What do you ask? Uh, I ask why they want the coach. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good place to start. <laughs> yeah, uh, because coaching is a process. Uh, one of the uh, there's two things that's very important in a coaching process. Uh, one of the things you should be open to change yourself. You go to a coach to make change, and also it's important that it's voluntarily. Other otherwise, the coaching process doesn't work. Right. So, for example, if I in a discovery call, I get a uh, one to that question says, "Hey, my manager thinks I need coaching." Then my next question will be, do you believe you need coaching? Because right. if you don't believe that, then I'm not the coach you're going to work with because you are not the, uh, the, it's not fulfilled that you are here voluntarily. And that right. has to be fulfilled for the coaching process to work. And then I ask uh, people of what, what is it they want to have out of the coaching? Mm -hmm. Because... One of the important things uh, my clients need to understand with working with a coach is I don't give solutions. I help them find their solution. That is the main core in coaching is that I will not give any solutions. Hmm. Um, so they should not come with their, what do you say, the idea of I will give them solution to solve their problem. Expectations. Yeah, that will never happen in a coaching uh, process. Uh, what I will do is I will help them to see their blind spot. I will help them to see where they are telling stories to themselves. I will help them, for example, also if we're talking about a couple, to where they're not listening to each other. Mm -hmm. So what I am there for is to point out the things they don't see themselves and how to work on what they don't see themselves. And probably you're dealing with a lot of limiting beliefs too. Yes. Because yeah. people might, there's somebody that might have been told by a parent or a teacher along the way, you you're not good at that. Don't do that. You're that's your that's your weakness mm -hmm. and they just store that away. Yeah. And so they don't ever pursue things in that direction mm. because they have been told and are made to believe that they will never be yeah. good at whatever that is. How mm. do you get rid of those limiting beliefs? Uh, it's an understanding of where do they come from? Mm -hmm. um, and also to a certain degree uh, to understand they are not true. So when, People say, uh, if a client say to me, oh, that it always goes like this. My question will be, is that true? Mm -hmm. And then really start diving into it because there is mm, there's never and always doesn't exist. Right. 
Right. In our mind, it all, does. Yeah. Yeah. But there is always exceptions. Mm -hmm. um, and now I use that always. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, that's so, funny. But, yeah. But there are exceptions. Uh, and you need to find these exceptions to start to believe that the truth you have been telling yourself, which turns into a limit, limiting belief, that this is perhaps not the whole truth. So back to the communication thing, where does science come into play? How do you take your scientific background? Because communication to me seems emotional emotion based <laughs> so how does yes. science come into play oh there's a lot of uh, of uh, science around uh communication also uh, so it is of course communication can be emotional uh but it's also uh a part of it is also to uh what you say accept when it is your emotional speaking so when you're speaking from emotions mm -hmm. and all and then understand where that these emotions come from. Um, and one of the things, for example, when we are talking about clear communication, so speaking from a clear point of view, from your point of view, mm -hmm. that is also to label your uh, emotion correctly. So, yeah, you are angry. But where does that anger come from? Does it come from because you are disappointed? Or does it come because you feel betrayed? Or does it come because you feel uh, distrust? Or because you are appalled by something the person has done? That is very different types of anger. Right. So this one of looking behind what you say, the first emotions, and say, what is behind this first emotion? And normally is also emotionals are complex it's rarely a single emotions you can pinpoint down to this is why i got angry there mm -hmm. can be a lot of different emotions in this blur who just goes out right. in anger and what do you say i think we everybody has uh experienced that one of we get angry on a person and it has nothing to do with that person. It's just because we have had a city day. Yeah, right. I think everyone has been in that situation oh, where yeah. we afterwards we're just like, oh, that was <laughs> perhaps the wrong person who who got that Oops. one there. Yeah. <laughs> That's so true. And there's this, I don't know what the saying is, but there's always some something that about whatever you're fighting about is not what you're really fighting about. Like you might be fighting about, you know, don't leave your glass out, throw it in the dishwasher. And then it gets escalated. And it's like, it's actually mm -hmm. about, you know, your bedroom life or something like that. It ends up, like, yeah. it always boils up, but it's not the root cause. Yeah. Um, just the dynamics of relationships would be just so fascinating to work with all the time. I couldn't yeah. imagine. How long have you been doing the coaching? I have been doing it now for... Oh, four years. Then time times goes fast. <laughs> yeah, it does. So, it what does. else? What else do you have in store? Do you have bigger plans? I know you were traveling in your van for a while, traveling yes. all over. I'm, yeah, Did you... I'm still doing that. Are uh, you? And I also, yeah, I'm also having my clients uh, from the van. Uh, I do all my coaching online, so my clients are pretty much spread all over the world. Um, so, uh. I also take them when I'm on the road. So sometimes they will see me in the van or they will see me in another city <laughs> or they will see me in my garden house. Uh, wow. That was for me what I wanted when I left corporate life. That was this freedom of being able to work from anywhere I was at that moment. And that one I, I succeeded very well in. Oh, that's amazing. I am so happy for you. I, yeah. I mean, so many people did that, especially after COVID. People just did not mm. want to go back to their their day-to-day -day jobs that they had. They realized mm. after looking back, what was I doing there? I didn't yeah. like it. I didn't even like what I was doing. Do no. you miss the science? Do you miss the... Yes. I do sometimes. I do miss... Uh, I, uh, I'm, 
I miss sometimes being a uh, being really nerdy about something on the <laughs> I miss my small bacteria in my petri dicks around looking at how they are surviving and things like that that I can miss definitely yes but I'm I'm never I'm missing it with the same kind of uh not nostalgic as you can you can miss a, a childhood show who gives you good memories a good feeling sure. in the body yeah. But you also know you should never see that childhood show again because then it will totally <laughs> ruin the memories about it. Right, right. Yeah. Well, so how does somebody know if they need a coach? I mean, not somebody telling them they need a coach. How does somebody yeah. know deep down that maybe I, this is something that I should be looking into? How do you know? Yeah. Uh, I was normally say I normally say there is three signs. There is this one of uh, like I say. You are not unhappy, but you're also not happy. So this this feeling of, yeah, things are okay, but I'm not really moving. There's not happening something. I, I'm feeling blur in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, there I would say it would be a very good point in, in reaching out for a coach. Uh, and talk about this one of finding a drive again. Okay. Uh, the other one is if you have tried to change something for a number of time and it you haven't succeeded, then I will also say a coach can help you along long the way on that one. Uh, the last one is if you keep up ending uh, in situations that are repeating themselves. Okay. Uh, I will also say a coach can also help you to find out what is going on here and why do I keep uh, ending up in these situations. Mm-hmm. And then there is the last one, uh, but I will say these normally will find a coach. That is just they want to develop themselves per- uh, personal. And they are already or out there looking for a coach or looking for ways to do a personal development. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a favorite book that you like about all that kind of stuff? Uh, I am uh, very fun. It changes for me because it's always what I'm I'm reading right at the moment. Um, Right. But I was very uh, intrigued by Stolen Focus. Uh, yes, I heard about that. I have not read it yes. all. I read um probably about four pages of it, but I yes. have heard about that. I yeah. need to pick that up. I saw it at the yeah. library. Yeah. So that one I was very intri- intrigued by. Um, then there is also, uh, I also, one of the tools I do, uh, I use art as a coaching tool. So I do art coaching where okay. people draw their emotions. Not oh. for me to see. It's not a wafer test or anything. So I have yeah. to analyze the drawing. I never see the drawings. Of, of course, if people want to share, it's perfectly fine. But it's not the point of it. Um, but uh, within that field, there's also a book. And I can't remember the author. Uh, but the book is called Draw Your Emotions. Where there's a lot of very concrete, small exercises you can use to draw out what you are feeling. If you are having hard finding the words. Interesting. So you don't see their drawings. So nope. how how do you help walk them through it if you don't even see what they draw? Uh, they explain to me what they have drawn and what it means and what they symbolize. Because okay. that is the most uh, that's the most important part. That is that they understand why this came up in my drawing and what they believe is symbolizing. Interesting. Yeah. I love books. I, I have like mm. a million and I open them at different times and whatever I yeah. was meant to see right then. I just feel like it speaks mm. to me. Love all that stuff. Daisy, I love yes. talking to you. You're so interesting. Yes. How tell people how they can find you. Yeah, they can find me. Uh, I would say the e- easiest way is in fact, just to Google my name, Daisy Hilpans, uh, both my website, my Facebook and my LinkedIn pop up. Right. Okay. Away. Okay. If they want to go directly, then it's hilpans.coach. That is my website. And there is also every contact information that is needed there. 
Okay, perfect. Well, it was so nice to meet you. I'll put all of that in the show notes too. So people know yeah. how to find you, but I learned a lot and I'm going to take that letter writing thing. Definitely mm -hmm. going to use that. Uh, my husband has yes. no idea what's going to hit him when he comes home today. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be like, what did you talk about today? Nope. And I, I will. Yes. And I will say you can use it in, in two ways. Uh, like I said, the one we talked about that is after conflict to understand the conflict better. Uh, another one I also uh, encourage when I'm um, uh, with the couples is uh, the little of why did I fall in love with you? Oh. So writing a letter of why did I fall in love with you? So this one of getting, uh, when you have an everyday life, it's very easy to for forget what is amazing about the other person. So just sitting down and write this letter of why did I fall in love with you brings all of these emotions up again and the memories are triggered again and you feel like first time love. Right. Yeah. Just writing a letter to each other. That's lovely. Cause who wouldn't want to read that? You know, it's just like, oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's so sweet. I love that. All right, Daisy, I will be in touch. Thank yeah. you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye. You too. Bye.